the earth was not habitable for people until they developed technology. That is, mm, human mm. beings are not native to the earth. We're native to Kenya. That is, we're native to the tropical Kenyan Rift Valley. That's why we have these long, thin arms with no fur on them. Look, no fur. Okay. Um, <laughs> and the... Uh, but we became able to leave our natural habitat in the Kenyan Rift Valley and colonize diverse habitats all over the earth, like Ice Age Europe and Asia, and then eventually in the Americas and Australia, um, by developing uh, a variety of technologies, like clothing and fire, for example, language, which was necessary in order to accelerate technological progress, uh, weapons that could kill at a distance necessary to hunt big game, thus making food available in winter in Ice Age Europe or Asia, um, etc. Um, that is a Neolithic culture, such as, for instance, uh, people witnessed among the American Indians, uh, it's far more advanced than human beings in the state of nature uh, in the Kenyan Rift Valley. And uh, this is the uh, technological uh, innovation that allowed us to become a global species and now not only global in extent but linked together globally through first long distance sailing ships and then telegraphs and aeroplanes and the internet and all of this um, so that we actually have become a, a truly global species that can operate on a global scale. Uh, but to come to the uh, point that you uh, brought up, <clears throat> I believe there is no such thing as a natural resource. There's only natural raw materials. It is human creativity that transforms materials into resources. For example, uranium was not a resource until we invented nuclear power. Um, oil wasn't a resource until we invented oil drilling and refining and things that could run on the product. You know, if, if you went could go to a meeting of the uh, Napoleon Bonaparte and his generals uh, and they were contemplating uh, conquering some country and they were listing its natural resources, they wouldn't have listed oil, let alone uranium or aluminum, which wasn't even known to science until the 1820s. Um, okay, they would have listed land for sure, but land was not a resource until people invented agriculture. Okay, until then it was just something you had to travel over to get where you wanted to go. Uh, it, it, what, it, land in itself is not a resource until you know how to make it produce something for you. Uh, and the, and, uh, I mean, well, okay, take another example. Uh, <clears throat> after the Neolithic period, we got to the Bronze Age, and this lasted 4,000 years, okay, from, uh, like 5,500 BC to about 1500 BC, People are using the following metals, copper, tin, um, zinc, lead, gold, silver. Okay, these are metals. They all melt at low temperatures and they all um, collectively are 100 parts per million in the Earth's crust. Okay, iron, on the other hand, is like uh, 50,000 parts per million in the Earth's crust. But iron wasn't a resource until people invented kilns hot enough to melt iron. So for 4,000 years, people are using metals, but only extremely rare metals, which is why during that period, metals, bronze, brass, as well as gold, okay, are things only for aristocrats. Once you have iron becomes a metal, which is hundreds, almost a thousand times more common than copper and, 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 and gold, um, then iron becomes something that can, metals for general use. And it affects not just weaponry, okay, but things like iron tip plows, iron axes, knives, okay, all of a sudden iron, metals become something for the common people. And now you have a tremendous expansion of civilization because the metallic resources have been expanded several hundred times. And then in the 19th century, aluminum becomes available because we have electricity, which you need. You can't get aluminum out of aluminum oxide just by heating it. You need to have electricity. So aluminum does not exist as a resource until people invent electricity. And uranium does not exist as a resource for any practical purpose until we invent nuclear power. And deuterium, heavy water, is not a resource now of any significance, but it will become a gigantic resource once we develop fusion power. 
So resources are created by people. And now this is a very important point because if you believe that resources are something that exist and people are just using them, then the more people there are, the less resources there are for you. And what that means is that human beings are fundamentally enemies of each other. They're competing for finite resources. Okay, and you get the view of humanity, of Malthusians, of Nazis, okay, Hitler. Okay, human beings are uh, diverse nations in a battle for survival over limited resources. Okay, um, the, the, but this is not true. Okay, this is simply not true. The, the, the human race does not, uh, well, it's not competing for limited resources because people from all nations or almost all nations are making inventions. Inventions made anywhere ultimately become used everywhere. And so the actual truth is that we are a family, a rather disorderly family to be sure, of nations engaged in a joint product to expand the resources available to all of us through technological innovation. And, you know, people, uh, um, you know, in China or somewhere may say, oh, the Americans, they're using up the world's resources because they are use up so much stuff. Okay, well, not so. America is 4% of the world's population, but it's been responsible for the past century or more for 50% of the world's invention and the other 50%, almost all of it, has been the rest of the advanced nations. Okay, and... It's precisely because of those innovations that China has been able to enormously increase its standard of living over the past 30 years through everything ranging from electricity to iPhones to, you know, and all these things basically created in the West. But where did the West get its renaissance in the first place? From inventions like paper and printing that were invented in China. So the, the, so th that is the truth. So the, the question is, okay, are humans creators or destroyers? I believe they are creators. And we have a common interest in working together to invent, to expand the resources available to all of us.